Welcome back to our weekly study of the Word of the Lord. In one occasion, the Lord Jesus said that many people will come from the east and from the west, and they will sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But many will be thrown out into outer darkness, where there will be crying and grinding of teeth. Matthew 8, 11. Christ is explaining to his audience that some people will spend their second life with God in eternity, while others will be in outer darkness outside the kingdom of heaven. Why? Well, because they are not residents and citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Only those with heavenly citizenship are accepted by God. But how do we know if we are or are not citizens of heaven? Are you a citizen of heaven? The first thing to know is that all human beings were born sinners, born in the kingdom of darkness. From the beginning of human history at the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had been separated from the presence of God, from the kingdom of heaven. They had been deceived by the serpent for pushing them to eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil instead of the tree of life. God wanted them to eat the tree of life, but they disobeyed God that caused them to lose their residence and citizenship from the kingdom of heaven. Consequently, all children of Adam from the beginning until today are not citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Number two, the kingdom of darkness is controlled by the evil one. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus told us to pray that God deliver us from the evil one because they are real beings. The goal of the kingdom of Satan is to enslave its citizens, and if you are in his kingdom, you will always follow his command to obey evil works of darkness. We can see that in Romans 6.16. With darkened hearts and mind, you will blindly follow your evil leader into the very sins that fool you deeper into slavery. If you are not in Christ, you remain captive into this kingdom of sin, and it is heading for your own destruction. So, those who do not know Christ live only for this world and the pleasure they can find for themselves. You are citizens of this world and of Satan's kingdom and live by its rules and value system. Number three, Christ came to take us away from the kingdom of darkness. We were once citizens of the kingdom of Satan. You may not agree with this, but that is the painful truth. Not only that we were citizens, we were also slaves to commit sins. God wanted the citizens of the kingdom of darkness to get rid of it and accept the invitation of Christ to be with Him. He sent His disciples everywhere, and those who join the Jesus movement will be freed from satanic control. They will be adopted by God, cleansed from their unrighteousness, forgive their sins, and given the right to become children of God. 4. Christ granted us citizenship in heaven. That's the reason why Paul declared that our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 3.20 Christ made all things possible. He took us out from the kingdom of Satan and brought us to His kingdom, the kingdom of God. Then He granted us new status, a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Right now, we are still here on earth, but we are eagerly waiting for the return of Jesus, and that is a mark of being a citizen of heaven. His promise is that He will transform our earthly bodies so that they will be like His glorious bodies. Philippians 3.21 Yes, we are still struggling, but our blessed hope is that upon His return, all citizens of the kingdom of God on earth will be taken out by Jesus to be with Him in eternity. People who rejected Christ's invitation will be under the power of Satan forever because they are citizens of the kingdom of darkness. 5. What are the privileges of the citizens of heaven? In Christ Jesus, there are many wonderful and precious promises. The moment you accepted Jesus Christ in your life, everything changed. You have a new standing from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. Christ made you a new creation. 
He made your spirit alive. You have reconciled with God. You are now under the rule of God. Not rule of Satan anymore. Your body is the temple of God. You were adopted by God and became a child of God. You have a new family, the family of God. You can make a personal prayer request directly to God. And because you are now a citizen of heaven, there are more benefits beyond your imagination. 6. What are the responsibilities of the citizens of heaven? A citizen of the kingdom of heaven, you legally belong to God's kingdom and have some responsibilities. The earth is no longer your home. It's only your temporary home. You need to give up your old citizenship in the kingdom of darkness and make a choice to be a citizen of heaven. Your eternal home is in heaven, so store up your treasures in heaven. As a citizen, you have to adopt the heavenly culture, values, practices, and atmosphere. You are to live in a way that is pleasing to the King of Heaven the Lord Jesus Christ. You are ambassadors of Christ on this earth, so you are to represent Jesus to the non-believing world. Through your life, you can make and encourage others to be different in this world and embrace your new status in life. Though we were born on earth, but we are like strangers here. This is a foreign country to us because our real home is in heaven. 7. Descriptions of Heaven from the Book of Revelation Heaven is a real place described in the Bible. It is the dwelling place of God. Jesus promised to prepare a place for true Christians in heaven. Heaven is also the destination of all the people of God, written in the Old Testament, who died trusting God's promise of the Redeemer. As what the Bible says, Whoever believes in Christ shall never perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 In the book of Revelation, the Apostle John was privileged to see and report on the heavenly city. He witnessed that heaven possesses the glory of God, the very presence of God. Because heaven has no night and the Lord himself is the light, the sun and moon are no longer needed. The city is filled with the brilliance of costly stones and crystal clear jasper. Heaven has twelve gates and twelve foundations. The paradise of the Garden of Eden is restored. The river of the water of life flows freely. The street of gold and the tree of life is available once again, yielding fruit monthly with leaves that heals the nations. However, John was in his description of heaven. The reality of heaven is beyond the ability of finite man to describe. Heaven is a place of no mores. There will be no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow. There will be no more separation because death will be conquered. The best thing about heaven is the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. We will be face to face with the Lamb of God who loves us and sacrifice Himself so that we can enjoy His presence in heaven for eternity. 8. What should be our priorities as citizens of heaven? The priorities of an earthly citizen are earthly, concerned only with the temporary things of this world, like food, education, career, family life, and other earthly things. But the priorities of citizens of heaven are heavenly, concerned primarily with things of eternal value. Eternal value are those things that lasted without ending, like the Word of God and the Kingdom of God. Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall never pass away. Matthew 24, 35 Tradition and religion shall be forgotten after many generations, but the Word of God and His Kingdom shall stand forever. No one can stop it, and this must be our concerns. We cannot bring our money, diplomas, and properties when we die. We cannot bring our loved ones, too. However, the knowledge of the Word of God can be brought to second life 
and the world to come. Paul said in Colossians 3, 2-3, Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, we were united with Him in such a way that everything that happened to Christ happened to us. The word died means separation. It tells us that we have been separated or transferred from this world to the world of Christ. You don't belong to this world anymore, but belong to Jesus Christ. We died with Him on the cross, but as believers, we were raised with Christ and seated in the heavenly realms, Ephesians 1.3. That's why we are now citizens of heaven. Therefore, to understand our priorities in life are the following. Number one, Word of God. Read your Bible every day. Number two, Kingdom of God. Live a life that is pleasing to God with holiness and righteousness. Number three, participate in church ministries like fellowship, Bible study, prayer meeting, breaking of the bread, and we can find that in Acts chapter 2, 42. If you will do these things with all your heart, you are truly a citizen of heaven. 9. And last, Paul's reason for writing that Christians are citizens of heaven. When Paul wrote this epistle to the Philippians, he was in prison and many prisoners were slaves. The population of Roman Empire by the time was 30 to 40 percent slaves and many of them became Christians. In fact, the enemies of Christianity in the early years declared that Christian faith is only for low-class people and slave of the empire. That's why Paul encouraged the brethren not to be shaken by persecution and criticism from the non-believers because they are blinded by the powers of Satan. He added that their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, their glory is in their shame, and their mind is set on earthly things, Philippians 3.19. On the contrary, Paul said, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Though they were not prominent nor rich in their community, they have hoped that one day, Christ will redeem them from the power of darkness and sin of this world. Finally, this new heavenly citizenship in Christ should affect how we live now. People should be able to identify us as citizens of heaven. While earthly people leave priorities to material things, the heavenly people give priorities to heavenly things. Sometimes, our minds and emotions are constantly under attack because of hard circumstances. But let us look up to Christ who called us and grant us new standing with God. Thank you for being here. Make Jesus Christ the center of your life. Be safe always. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you and God bless.